Welcome to State of the State. I'm your host, Roy Pruitt. If you remember about a year ago, we interviewed Rory Raven on his book of the Door Rebellion, and we, ha we have him back this, uh, today to, to, to discuss his newest book, Burning the Gatsby. Uh, uh, glad to have no. you. Thanks for having me. So what, what gave you the inspiration to, to write this book? Uh, the, the attack on the Gatsby is another one of those episodes in Rhode Island history that doesn't get as much airplay as it deserves yeah. in, in some ways. Um, when you, you talk to people uh, about it, they, they kind of know some of the story. Well, wasn't it a boat that we attacked and burned? And that might be about uh, it. But there were all kinds of uh, events leading up to uh, and all kinds of repercussions afterwards that, that people, I think, weren't really up to speed on. Um, so it seemed like another interesting area to uh, to explore. It seems like a lot of everybody, a lot of I would hope a lot of people know about the the, the molasses act, the sugar act, and then all the that stamp stuff from high school and all the stuff, and then they just skip over Rhode Island. Like, it just seems like you know it goes from the, the Boston massacre to the Lexington and Concord, and just. Yeah. Skip straight over this. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the Gatsby gets kind of uh, glossed over. Um, the, the Boston Tea Party gets much more airplay uh, than, uh, than the burning of the Gatsby. And the Gatsby uh, event happens a full 18 months before the Boston Tea Party. Um, Do you think there's any reason why, why would that be? Or? That I, I'm not sure. The, the only answer I've got is a semi-joking one that I think Boston just has a better PR department yeah, uh, yeah. than Rhode Island. Rhode Island was involved in that triangle trade and, yep. and, and that. So um, where did you get your inspiration for, for this? Did... Um, just having heard the story uh, and, and knowing that yeah. there was you know, this Gatsby Days event um, and, and knowing that there was much more to the story than, than I had uh, usually heard, uh, that it was worth examining. Yeah. So the, um, the, Ga the Gatsby it was, it was a revenue ship that was coming, going up the, the Narragansett Bay. Yep, yeah, it was there to, uh, to collect taxes because Rhode Island was a hotbed of smugglers. Um, you know, people were, were making their fortune uh, smuggling rum um, up to, uh, or smuggling uh, sugar and slaves uh, up to the distilleries in Newport and Providence, uh, which would then be brought over to Africa to trade for slaves, brought down to uh, the, the West Indies for, for more sugar and more molasses. Yeah, now I've, I've read both your books, the last, the last two books. Oh, thanks very much. Anyways, and uh, it just seems like you can't get away from those rebellious Rhode Islanders, you know? No. It just seems like they're always stirring something up. You know, yeah, in yeah we, we've, we've always been a, a difficult bunch of people yeah. uh, in the best possible way. Yeah, yeah. Well, there was um, the, one of the biggest, um, what it all started this was Rhode Island is trying to avoid paying taxes to Britain. Yep. It, that's all, it, and Britain trying to, trying to squash them and trying to make them pay their own fair share for what, the Seven Year War? Or um, well, the, the, the Thirty Years war, Year in, war in England over here plays out as the French and Indian War. Yeah, French and Indian War. Um, and the, the kind of ironic thing is that um, uh, you know, Eng the French and Indian War is about um, England and France and France's Indian allies fighting for control of the colonies, who's going to be in charge over here. Um, and the, the, uh, the British win. Uh, so it, it kind of you know, establishes, it, it, it you know, firms up the claim to, uh, to these being British colonies. And the sentiment in the colonies after the French Indian War is we kind of feel more British than ever. You know, it's like the mother country just went to war to, to keep us. Um, so there, there was a certain uh, sense of, you know, we're, we're British citizens. Um, and that then leads into the whole question of taxation without representation, because Britain has run up this massive war debt fighting the Thirty Years' War and the French and Indian War. Uh, they need to pay off. So they start taxing the hell out of the colonies. Uh, and that's when people start realizing, well, wait a minute, we don't have any representatives back in, in Parliament arguing on our behalf. We have no say in what's going on, uh, but we're still paying taxes at a much higher rate than people are in, in Britain itself. Yep. Um, so, so that, that be, begins to, uh, to chafe. And at this time, we were, we, we, uh, the majority of the people weren't even born in England. They were born here in, in the colonies. Yep. Oh, so they were more American than they were British. Yeah, many of them, yep. So, um, the collecting of the, the taxes, you know, the molasses um, trade, I saw, thought it was very interesting how with 
Rhode Island has just decided we're not going to trade with, with Britain anymore. You know, we're just not going to. Yeah, there were there were laws uh, in place that you know requiring colonists to trade with uh, with the British and British allies. Uh, yeah. But Rhode Island was had such a thriving molasses trade be, for that leg of the, the slave trade um, that the the British and British colonies and British allies couldn't produce enough molasses uh, for the trade. Um, so they had to go outside um, yeah. and and trade. With, I thought it was you know, pretty interesting. They would actually trade with the with the enemies like the French that sure. they were instead of paying the taxes to Britain. Yep. They would they would under a flag of truce bring um, prisoners of war, French prisoners of war to, to France. And yes. as they're unloading the prisoners of war, they're loading up the holes of the the yeah. holes of the, of the ships with molasses to yeah. bring back to make rum. Yep. And, uh, there was this whole idea that if you were returning prisoners of war, you would be allowed to go into French ports. Yeah. Um, so uh, while they were dropping, while they were returning French prisoners of war, they would load up a molasses while they were uh, yeah. there in port. And Stephen Hopkins uh, used to charge, I think it was 500 pounds, to authorize one of these flag of truce uh, voyages, yeah. uh, which he would then pocket. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there was even uh, 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 at least one incident where um, a captured British, uh, the crew of a, a captured French boat was divided up among a, a fleet uh, of Rhode yeah, Island yeah, ships, yeah. Um, all sailing under a flag of truce. They all had like one French prisoner uh, aboard each so they could have as many ships as they could go down to these French ports and load up on molasses. Uh, so yeah, the flag of truce uh, fairly quickly became a, a real scam. Yeah. Um, so uh, being Rhode Island rum runners and making rum was one of the chief um, industry here in, in Rhode Island because you know, the farm farming was yep. the soil is rocky. It's really thin with loom. It's not yes. really good for, for a farming community. Yep. Yeah. So we, we went from from attempting at farming uh, into manufacturing yeah. uh, pretty quickly mm -hmm. and, and distilling. Um, also in this this period. Yeah, I think in your book you, you state that at one point there was like 250 distilleries right here in Rhode Island. Um, I think it was about 30. Was it 30? Um, which yeah. is still a, a whole lot. And about yeah. 20 of those I think were in Newport. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So Newport was, was sort of a hotbed of this, um, the epicenter of uh, yeah. Yeah. the Rhode Island rum industry. Well, that was the big um, port, you know, big um, yeah. in, yep. import, export. Yep. Yeah, port, Newport port was the, the leading city in Rhode Island at the time. So um, how... At, after this point, the, the um, Britain, they would send ships, you know, line, ships of the ships of the line to yep. try to enforce the the tax laws, and that yep. didn't that didn't go very well, did it? No, um, they didn't send ships of the line. Ships of the line would oh. be huge. Yeah. Um, yeah, they would send smaller ships like schooners yeah. um, to patrol up and down Narragansett Bay and and stop any boat uh, passing uh, to, to make sure that they had the right manifests, they had paid the right taxes, had the right sort of customs clearances. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the Gatsby was the most notorious of that. There were uh, several incidents uh, in the years before the, the attack on the Gatsby uh, that were very similar, yeah. uh, where um, they would, uh, colonists would, would attack um, British boats, yeah. beat up the crew, um, and you know, cut the, the boats loose and, and let them drift over Goat yeah. Island where they'd yeah. set them on fire. It was like the, um, uh, the Liberty was one of the Liberty. Um, and uh, the Liberty, which, which had belonged to John Hancock at one yeah. point, it was yeah. captured yeah. from him uh, and taken as a, a British boat. Um, so there were a number of, of episodes leading up to the Gatsby, but I think yeah. the Gatsby is at a time when um, the British and the colonists have just had enough of each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So something's got to give because tensions are rising. Uh, so the Gatsby is in, in the right place or the wrong place. Yeah. Uh, the the fortune was, it was owned by Nathaniel Green and that was like one, of the, one of the ships that was precipitated, the whole yes. chasing the Hanner and burning the Gatsby. Yeah, um, Lieutenant Duddingston, the, uh, the commander yeah. of, uh, of the Gatsby, um, he makes the mistake of seizing the fortune which belongs to the, the Green family and, um, and they're smuggling molasses and sugar. Yeah, and right. he knows that he can't trust a Rhode Island court uh, to convict members of the Green yeah, family. So yeah. he sends the, the fortune uh, up to Boston to be tried yeah. there. Because at that time, if any ships that was, that was um, confiscated, they would be put up to auction. But there was like, um, the, the owners were the only ones that would, uh, that would actually bid on it. So he would be buying his own, yeah, his own yeah, ship if, back, his own uh, goods back. A real Rhode Island kind of thing. Yeah, when your ship yeah. came up to auction, all your friends kept yeah, quiet, and yeah. you, you were the only one who bid, so you would get your property back. Um, yeah. And he knew something like that would happen. Um, and he'd never get a conviction yeah. on an event. So he sends it to Boston, which is against the charter. Uh, and that really raises hackles. Yeah. Um, that's when, when people say, okay, he's completely overstepping his authority. He's, he's ignoring our charter, um, which was granted yeah. by the 
the king, uh, and that makes him really unpopular. If he was unpopular before, which he certainly was, uh, sending the fortune to Boston uh, made him- Vice Admiralty Court. Vice Admiralty Court up there. In um, even more Circumventing unpopular. the Kent County Court. Yes. court to, was in East Greenwich at that time, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the case should have been heard in, yeah. in Rhode Island, and it wasn't. He, it was sent yeah. up to Boston. So do you think like the, the Gatsby, was that intentionally run the ground? You think it was just like an opportunity, an unfortunate circumstance, there, and it just happened to uh, capitalize on it? There, there, there's two schools of thought. Um, there, there's one school that says uh, the whole thing was a conspiracy from, from the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, this was weeks and months uh, in the planning. And that um, you know, the, the hand of the boat, the boat that the Gatsby is chasing yeah. um, intentionally ran them aground. Um, and weren't they, they, they ran, ran aground a year earlier? When they, so they knew there was a sandbar? Or, John, Brown John Brown had, Brown had run aground uh, a number of years okay. before on, yeah. on Gatsby Point. Um, so, so there is that, that school of thought. This is it's a huge conspiracy from the, the very beginning. I, I don't hold with that myself. Yeah. Looking yeah. At, at this whole uh, thing, to me, it seems like a, a happy accident, happy for the yeah. colonists, yeah. not so yeah. much for the crew of the Gatsby, um, because it doesn't seem to have this. Uh, I, I, it doesn't seem like something that has a lot of planning behind it. To me, it seemed like a very hastily thrown together yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of plan. Um, I think because yeah, it, it was a, a well, there were ships that well. we'll Little tiny ships uh, um, in, the, in um, Providence, they were the yeah, guys the beating boats. drums, the longboats beating yep. drums and telling about the, the grounding of the Hannah. And yeah, I mean, if, if it's if it's a long-standing conspiracy and they were yeah. planning this all along, they would have been in the longboats and they were in the longboats. You wouldn't have needed yeah. to send a guy up and down the street with a, yeah. a, a drum. Yeah. Um, and I think if if it was weeks and months in the planning, somebody at some point in that, that planning would have said, hey, wait a minute, this isn't the only ship the British have. And yeah. if we burn yeah. it, they're just going to send a lot more ships, which is what they eventually do. Um, you know, I think cooler heads would have prevailed. Somebody would have said, this doesn't seem like the, the right plan. Um, but in the fact that to me, it seemed like this all comes together in one night. Um, it, it seems like you know, yeah. cooler heads didn't have a chance to prevail. Yeah. And you know, Lieutenant D Duddingston, who was the uh, captain of the, the Gatsby, he, yep. was, he was stirring up a lot of stuff right bef even before this. He, everybody was, didn't really like him, did they? Yeah, yeah, he was, he was, uh, he was down in Philadelphia, and he was unpopular down there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, he, he was an unpopular character before he arrived uh, here in Rhode Island. We don't know a whole lot about his early career, uh, but we, we do hear some stories about him um, you know, abusing colonists and, and yeah. clapping men in irons for no reason and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So he was uh, an unpopular character before he arrived here. So the long boats, they go into, into Providence and um, there's, there's um, somebody walking up and down the streets beating a drum and trying yeah. to, trying to um, coax up some, some trying to uh, rabble rouse, I guess you could say. You know, you could, and yep. um, they they met at what, Sabin Tavern. That Sabin's was, Tavern, Sabin's yep, Tavern, which is a yeah. parking lot today, unfortunately. Oh, okay, that was the corner of South Main Street. And uh, yep, South Main Planet. and Planet. It's Planet, Planet there. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the parking lot for Partridge Snow and Han today. Oh, okay then. And when uh, what in the eighteen hundreds, the building was torn down. Yep. But it was the, the room where they met. It was actually moved. The room is preserved. The is room it, still exists. Somebody, this is an apartment now. Somebody's yes, living it's in, there. Yes, it's in right? somebody's condo. Um, and and uh, a friend of a friend has an email into the person. Um, yeah. I haven't been able to visit the room yet, but but hopefully fairly soon, yeah. uh, I should be able to, to go visit. So there's some some evidence that, that um, kind of substantiates that the Freemasons and the Sons of Liberty might have had a hand in, in all this. Yeah, there, there was a lot of overlap between those two groups, um, yes, and it, yeah. it's a little hard to 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 tell who. I mean, the Sons of Liberty may not have been very organized, yeah, uh, as organized yeah. as the Masons. Um, it may have just been sort of a, a catch-all phrase for anybody who was opposed to British taxation. Yeah, Because yeah. um, I was like under the impression in school they teach you that it was in Boston, or the, the Sons of Liberty was yeah. in Boston, and I thought that, you know, that's, that's where all the, the revolution like was was born was was Boston, you know. Well, that that's like I said that that's you know the Boston PR machine uh, doing a better job yeah. than, than yeah. we are. This happens 18 months before the Boston Tea Party. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's it's every bit as important uh, an event as the Boston Tea Party. Because yeah. even uh, with the the Boston massacre, they portrayed it. It was portrayed totally opposite of what what actually happened. You know, it was yep. the colonists they were throwing snowballs with 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 oyster shells inside a snowball throwing yes. the yell and you know and it just happened to one one shot was fired and next and Paul Revere portrayed it as all these all these uh, lobster backs lobster backs yep. yeah lobster backs was, was was executing him you know yeah 
Yeah, Paul Revere kind of plays it up. Yeah. Um, he's, he's a good sort of propagandist uh, for, for the cause. Um, but five people do get killed in the Boston Massacre. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Um, so with the, the Masons, the St. John's Lodge, there was, there's, um, a, in the minutes of their meetings of the, um, of the book, it states, in, no meeting tonight, more pressing business at hand. This is what I've been told. You know? um, yeah. my, my understanding is that the Masons uh, in the 1770s didn't have uh, a dedicated lodge. So they would meet in, yeah. in various locations. And apparently Sabin's Tavern was yeah. one of the places the Masons used to meet. Uh, and John Brown uh, and some of the other notables who were involved in this were, were Masons and members of that lodge. Well, back and, in those days, taverns were the popular place to go. That's where everybody went to. Right, that's where you get your news. And, your town meetings, uh, everything yeah. was, at the, was at the tavern, yeah. you know, a local tavern. Yeah, a tavern keeper was a, a good business to be in back then. Yeah. You'd always yeah. have customers and always have something yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and yes, I, I was told by someone I met years ago that uh, he had seen the, the minutes book for, for yeah. June 9th, 1772. Yeah. Um, and there was supposed to be a meeting that night, which is probably why so many notable Rhode Islanders yeah. are there, because yeah. they're yeah. there for a meeting. Um, and supposedly in the, the minutes book, it says, uh, no meeting tonight, more pressing business at hand. Yeah, uh, yeah and that's I, pretty I, interesting. It, yeah, yeah, I've been able to, to get a, a look at that. Um, yeah. Hopefully I can get a look at that and at the Gatsby room and, and you know, finish up yeah. Uh, yeah. what I started. So is um, somebody's actually living at the Gatsby room, so you, you can get yep. in there to look at it? Or? Yeah, I, I would stop by yeah. Um, yeah. when I was coming back from the Rhode Island Historical Society Library, because uh, it's right around the corner. Uh, yeah. And I would, I would stop by and, and ring the bell and, and wait, and, and the, I could never catch the, yeah. the person yeah. home. And I'm sure of, it looks totally different than the book, the, the picture you have in your book. It, it, it does look a little bit different. I, I would kind of peek in the window a little bit, um, but yeah. I didn't want to be the weird guy standing on the porch yeah, peeking in the window. Yeah. Cause yeah, the police show up. Then the police show up. <laughs> yeah, and, no, you know, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it does look fairly different uh, from, from the, yeah. the photograph in the book. So um, they get a collection of like 50 or 60 men and they go off in these long boats to, yep. to the, yeah, the Gatsby where it's grounded. It's yeah, grounded Namquid, on, Namquid, which is now Gatsby. Which is now Gatsby Point, yep. Okay. Uh, and I was out there, uh, was out there a, while, a little while ago and one of the, the fellows who was incredibly helpful in this uh, was Henry Brown. And Henry yeah. Brown is one of the Browns. Yeah. And he's a descendant of John Brown. And he now owns Gatsby Point. And, um, and he, he urged me, he said, you've got to go out there because yeah. he said, historians don't go out there. Um, so he says, as far as he knows, I'm the only American historian of the Gatsby event to walk out there and yeah. stand yeah. there. Um, yeah. at the, and actually, at, at actually the memorial of, of where where um, Dud Duddingston was, was, was brought to shore after being shot. Yep, in Stillhouse Cove. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, uh, just up the, the shore a bit from, uh, from Gaspee Point. Um, yeah, there's, there's a, uh, a monument in Stillhouse Cove where he was uh, brought and also a monument over on Peck Lane where uh, his men were kept uh, yeah. for a, a day or two before being sent back down to Newport. Yeah. So yeah, there are two so markers. They, they there actually thought he was, he was dead because he, he was shot once in a... He was shot, shot once? once. At, well, but twice. He, well, yeah, actually twice. Once in the groin once and once in the in shoulder. Once in the shoulder. Yeah. Um, and, and that's another you know, point of debate uh, among yeah. historians. Yeah. Um, they, they get kind of a uh, you know, magic bullet about it. And some of them yeah, say, well, it, 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 it went in hit and, the arm yeah. and then it went down to, to the crotch. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. One of the accounts um, of that night from one of the, the British sailors uh, says that there were shots fired from the men on the Gatsby firing back at the longboats. Yeah. Yeah. And my guess is that maybe Duddington gets hit by one of his own guys. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's the arm wound, um, in yeah. addition to getting hit in the crotch by one of the guys yeah. in the longboat. Yeah. Um, There's one guy, he's give me your gun, I can shoot the... F, reach me your gun, I can yeah. kill that fellow. I love <laughs> yeah, that. Yes. I I love, yep. yeah. Um, yeah, Joseph Buckland. Um, yeah. He turns to his friend Ephraim Bowen and says, reach me your gun, I can kill that fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then shoots Duddington and then hits the captain yeah, and the little yeah. captain, as I often say, um, which has to be an incredibly lucky shot. Oh, yeah. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I uh, a musket at, at any kind of range, you've, you've got There's no, no chance of hitting anything. No, I know. Um, I know. So to, to, to hit Duddingston at all uh, is, is a, a lucky shot. Yeah, yeah. Not for Duddingston. Well, yeah. No, not for Duddingston. But he goes on later on in life to have four children anyway. So yeah, he, yeah. Uh, and he gets a pension for, yeah. uh, for that wound. And, and his account, when he's, he does face a court-martial because he's lost his ship, um, yeah. and he, uh, in the court-martial, uh, he makes it sound like he stood single-handed against yeah. some yeah. army. He yeah. says there were 150 men um, in those longboats when yeah. most historians say it seemed 60, 80, thereabouts. Yeah. And um, isn't an account where 
Abraham Whipple. He, he's, I'm the sheriff. I want to serve you papers. He wasn't even a, the sheriff at no, the time. No, he wasn't the sheriff. He wasn't a sheriff. Um, well. John Brown was uh, the sheriff of, I think, Bristol County. Um, but... Um, uh, but yeah, Abraham Whipple uh, has that, that yeah. great quote. I'm the sheriff of the county of Kent, God damn you. I have a warrant for your arrest, God damn you. So surrender, <laughs> God damn you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, he wasn't the sheriff of anywhere. No. no um, and he didn't have a warrant. <laughs> no. uh, but it, it's still a, a great sort of quote. Yeah. So after um, he, he shot, then what, 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 are they, what, what happens after, after that? Uh, the men in the longboat yeah. swarm aboard the Gatsby. Um, yeah. they, they didn't you, John Brown told them not, not to take anything off the ship because they didn't want to be yeah. tied to, any, to anything? Yeah, no, no evidence. No, no, no evidence. Um, yeah, did, don't take anything. But somebody um, did, so they took a, ch a chalice and a silver two, cup. At least two items make it off the Gatsby. Um, one yeah. is this, this wine goblet that's supposedly Duddingston's uh, yeah. themselves. Yeah. Um, and it, it seems to be taken by uh, a Whipple. Because it's passed down in the Whipple family yeah. for a few yeah. generations before they donate it to the yeah. Round Historical Society. Um, and the other was um, Duddingston's uh, hat. And there's yeah. a, a kid who's parading up and down the, the street uh, in Duddingston's hat the next day before some, some adults pull him aside yeah. and take yeah. the hat away from him and say, what are yeah. you doing? Uh, yeah. Get rid of that thing. Yeah. So. Wasn't it, there was a couple of canes made out of the, the, burnt, the burnt wood, some of the shards that was left to yep. was um, there? Yeah, apparently Fry and Bowen seems to have gone out to the wreck later and taken some uh, wood from the railing uh, and made uh, a few canes, um, one of which one is of over the New York, uh, the uh, Round Historical Society. One is down in, I think, in Florida. Oh, really? Uh, in okay. private hands, from what I understand. Yeah. yeah. So there's two or three of them out there. Okay, so, uh, um, so after the, there's, um, there's, a, in, there's an inquest, isn't there? Like the, the, Brit, the British has yeah. an inquest of what happened. They want to try to try these, try find out who actually did this. Yes, you know? yeah, the, the, there's a royal commission convened in Newport. Mm -hmm. um, and there are governors and judges brought in from other colonies uh, to, to sit uh, and, and try to find out you know, what happened. And there, there are uh, 500,000 pound rewards offered for anybody yeah. who has information. And which was funny, uh, the, uh, 500 pounds was, was uh, the price of one of the ships, one of the sloops. Uh, right? It was actually more than the than what it was worth. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, more than they paid for, yeah. uh, for paid for the boat, um, the ship. Um, so yeah, and then the, uh, there are um, there are a couple of people coming before the, the commission. Um, and the, the thing that really, uh, again, upsets Rhode Islanders is that um, the commission is, uh, anybody who's convicted before this commission is gonna be sent to England for trial yeah. uh, and possibly yeah. executed. And, and again, this is another overstepping of the charter. This is a crime that happened in Rhode Island. You have no business sending people out of the, you know, across the ocean yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, to stand trial. Uh, and that actually gets, um, gets the attention of other colonies as well. Yeah. Uh, Thomas Jefferson comments on this. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a, he sees the, the, the injustice in, in sending people out of, uh, of, of the, the country uh, to, to face trial yeah. elsewhere yeah. for a, a crime that... Uh, that's that seems like here. a reoccurring theme in history in general is, is they'll try to whisk you away to, to try right. you where, away from your peers. You yes. Know? So. Um, yeah, I mean, as, as we were saying before, it happened to Thomas Wilson Dorr. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, he, he's, he's in we'll Providence. To Newport. Yeah. When they capture him, they send him down to Newport, which is the, the opposition stronghold. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they always seem to, to kind of want to get you where you're uh, least yeah. able to... Yeah. Uh, Get help. Yeah. And even like the, the governor at the time, was what was his name? The governor of Rhode Island. Um, um, that's um, uh, Hazard. No, it wasn't Hazard. No, it wasn't Hazard. Walton? Um, no, Walton. They'll, edit, anyway, this, they'll yeah, edit this they, part out, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Wanton. Wanton, Wanton, not Hazard. Yeah, Wanton. Wanton Hazard, it yeah. sounds kind of, yeah, they yeah. both sound dangerous. Um, so yes, Wanton. You know, the, the, then they, they say, well, you know, according to your charter, that you know they they describe they, you, they say you, you uh, there's a, an office of governor, but they don't describe his duties. Yeah. You know, so it, it seems like that. Well, even even Rhode Island, it's, in Rhode Island, it's still going on today with the separation of powers, yep. and they're saying, well, you know, the King Charles Charter, and yep. you know, so they it, it actually um, that, the governor tried getting them off. He tried, you know, he tried getting them. Yeah, he, um, he kind of helps stage manage um, yeah. some of the the, uh, the the Royal Commission's inquest, and he, he tries to sort of hobble them. Um, one of his 
fears, though, in, in all of this is that um, if he doesn't at least look like he's trying to do something, then the British will, will revoke the charter. Yeah. Um, that, that was sort of his big fear. Um, so he's he's kind of trying to look like he's doing something. He's trying to make yeah, sure that nobody's really... Too hard, though, but not I mean, trying too trying hard. hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, but he's got to look like he's doing something yeah. so they don't yeah. revoke the charter. Um, so he, he's, he's got this sort of tightrope to... Uh, to yeah. walk for a while. And eventually nobody's tried, nobody's found guilty or anything, right? Yeah, um, the, the closest they get is, uh, is Aaron Briggs. Yeah. Um, Aaron and Briggs. he was uh, an indentured servant yep. from um, Prudence Island, Prudence wasn't it? Yep. Prudence Island. Um, yeah. And uh, he, he's on the water that night and he bumps into um, Simeon Potter, who's one yeah. of the Gatsby writers coming from Bristol. And he just put him in the boat and he said, you're coming with me, right? You're coming with yeah. me, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I'm not really sure yeah. what, uh, what Potter's motive there is. The only guess I can make um, is that Simeon Potter was a privateer. Um, okay. This was a man who once sacked a church. Yeah. Um, and I think he was something of a pirate at heart. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and my guess is that maybe he just wanted another boat that Aaron Briggs oh, was in, okay. uh, yeah. a spare boat to, to hold the loot that yeah. he thought yeah. he was going to be getting from the gas yeah. Yeah. Um That's sort of my my guess. In Rhode Island, though, that was like one of the biggest industries. Was he either be a privateer, a rum runner, yep. or a slave trader? A slave trader, right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those trade. were the, the, the basic career choices, yep. yeah. Um, so, yeah, Aaron Briggs gets kind of dragooned into uh, uh, helping out, and he... Uh, he, he talks under threat of torture, um, yeah. and he's brought before the commission to, to tell what he knows, but uh, knowing that he, he really does seem to have information about what yeah. really happened. Yeah, but he had the, some of the names wrong. He was Dr. Weeks. It wasn't a Dr. Weeks, yep. though. So. Um, yep. Uh, but he, he, he does have other names uh, yeah. right, yeah. so they yeah. immediately kind of move to, to discredit yeah. him yeah. Uh, as thoroughly as they can, which they do manage to do. Yeah. Uh, so, which is... At the, at the end of your book, I, I hate to jump ahead, but we're sure. coming to the end of the show. No, good heavens. You know, we only have a few minutes. So um, and at, the, at the very end of your, end of your book, you, you leave with a statement that um, history just doesn't happen in Boston, New York, or Philadelphia. It happens right. everywhere. It even happens in Rhode Island. Yeah, you know? sure. Rhode Island has always had this kind of inferiority complex uh, about its own history. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, we forget things about the attack on the Gatsby, which was yeah. uh, right. you know, a major event. That One of the things that led to uh, a sense of unity among the colonies, people kind of did rally around this event. Yeah. Uh, we have the Industrial Revolution starting yeah. up in, in yeah. Pawtucket. Um, so we have all kinds of things happening here, but we, we tend to have this inferiority complex and yeah. think that you know, real history happened in Boston and Philadelphia and yeah. New York. Yeah. It didn't happen here. Here. I like talking about like where things happening, where, where they happened, with places that we know is tame. Maybe it's maybe different, like the buildings are missing, are different. Right. But you know, we all know where South Main Street is in Providence. So yeah, yeah you, you can you know, go and stand on the site where Saban's Tavern was. Yeah, um, you know, you can you can see Gatsby Point. Hey, um, this is John Brown's has a museum, isn't it? Is it his house? Yep, John Brown's house. John yeah, Brown that house wasn't there when, when this was happening. But yeah, oh, okay. I mean, that was his yeah. his home. So you can. Stand there where he himself stood. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, there, there's there all kinds of sites that are, are of importance uh, that yeah. we maybe sometimes overlook. Yeah. yeah, to our cost. Yeah. Okay, we have one minute left. Is there anything you like to make a st clothing a clothing statement, or um, oh, do you have anything new going on in your life? Anything you have um, planned for the future? Uh, well. Thinking vaguely about the next book, um, yeah. I'm kind of getting interested in Samuel Slater. Oh, okay. Um, so That'd another thing the that kind of industrial gets... revolution yep. here in Rhode Island. Yep. yep. Uh, yeah, man who changes the face of the state and of the nation yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's so that'd be pretty interesting. I'd be look forward to reading that book too. Yeah. So we'll have yeah. you back then. I will get you a copy. Yeah. Okay. So. Thanks, Thanks for having me. And... Okay. You've been watching State of the State.